God bless my brothers and sisters. It's another beautiful day to worship the Lord and the beauty of His holiness. Amen. So, many people wonder why I do so many videos. First of all, I do what the Lord tells me. And I'm delightful and grateful to do them because it brings glory to God's name. It defends the truth. And it shows people that God's word is true. So, many people always ask me, Oh, you know, you teach a lot about the false Christianity, you know, got to. Anything that you believe in, anything that you love, anything you care for, you're going to defend. You know, the Bible says always give a, a answer for the hope that life in you. Right. So it's telling you to always be prepared to answer people. Always be prepared to, to respond. Always be prepared to, you know, uh, speak forth the truth. So that's what I do. So. No matter what, you know, people think or, you know, what they believe, the reality is that, you know, when you care for God, when you love God, you're going to stand on the truth and you're going to make sure that his, his name is glorified because you care, you know, when you marry to someone you know, and you really care for that person, whether it be a man or whether it be a woman, that person is a part of you. The Bible says you become one, one flesh, right? So if the Bible say no man that hates him, no man that, you know, hate himself, you know. So if you love yourself, what would you do? So if y'all one flesh, both other person the same way. So, you know, you'll be trying to tell people like, hey, you know, this is my wife, this is my husband, you know. Uh, you know, you'd be telling them all the good things about them. You wouldn't let, you know, lies and rumors and things that wasn't true, you know, be said about them. Because that's not the truth. And you care for that person. You love that person. So, the point that I'm trying to make is that at the end of the day, what you see today, and I, I know maybe people don't care, but it doesn't matter who cares and who doesn't care. The fact of the matter is that it's the truth. And we know that from the Bible and we know from, you know, what we have been taught by God's word that many people don't become Christians anyway. So this is for those who, you know, want to become Christians. Or it could be for those who, you know, look at Christianity in a bad light. So I could help to shed light and help to, to share some truth, you know, to bring comfort to those people who might look at, who might look down on Christianity, never want to become a Christian, but at least they know the truth. And they have, many have been misled, misguided, you know, have been taught uh, different uh, false uh, teachings. So the beauty behind it all is this, is that, you know, just when you look at people that's in fraternities and sororities, people that, you know, like some people in fraternities, some men, they got like burn marks on their body. Like they were branded with the fraternity logo, you know, or their symbol because they're showing their, uh, their, 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 they're showing their, 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 their loyalty, the dedication, you know, that that's who they're with. Something that's branded mean that's what they belong to, right? So, you know, you see cattle get branded. So, a person branding themselves, that's for life, you know? So, you know he's not going to allow things to be said about his fraternity that's not true. When this man had to go through all this stuff to become a, um, in that fraternity. So, so, that's the reality, brothers and sisters. So, let's look at what I wrote as the Lord gave it to me. Many who claim to be Christians are not doing what the Bible say. The things you see today is not Christianity. And I want to talk about something. I was on the phone with this guy. I was on the phone with this guy earlier. Right? I mean, I was on the phone with this guy. I was, I was on the phone with someone earlier telling about what happened with this guy I was talking to earlier. And I had went somewhere and this guy walked up to me. Or he spoke to me. And he was like, um, 
He was like, you know, God bless you. Jesus loves you. And, -d 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 -d, and the Virgin Mary and something else. I'm like, are you like, what are you? Are you a Catholic? He was like, yeah. I said, but you didn't mention like three different, you know, religions or beliefs in what you just said to me. So I started talking to him and telling him all this stuff. You know, and um, he was telling me things that wasn't biblical. So he was saying that Mary didn't have more children. That's why they believe her, like as the Virgin Mary. I'm like, but brother, where does the Bible mention Catholic or like where do like? And this is what I come to learn, and and I mean this with all my heart. And this is this is the, this is this is this is as real as it gets, as truthful as it gets. People really don't believe in the Bible, and they don't even believe when they see what the Bible says, because it proves to you that so many people came to false Christianity that they don't even know what the Bible actually says. And when you tell them what the Bible actually says, they're like, they're like, I, I, I gotta look at it for myself. Like it's like. They agree with the false ways. It's, it's, it's kind of like you being a true believer and someone comes with some falsehood and how you're going to, you know, shun it. They do the same thing when you bring the truth. Remember what Peter said. I mean, what Paul said, the way of truth will be evil spoken of. Right. And Paul says deceivers, but true. Peter spoke about it as well. So if the way of truth will be evil spoken of. And then Paul said that many shall uh, depart from the faith. You know, give me to do spirit that's the devil, speaking lies and hypocrisies. So when you look at what the Bible is telling you, look at what the Bible is telling you. It's telling you that people are going to hear the word of God and not receive it. They're going to harden their heart. The way of truth will be was spoken of. Many are going to depart from the faith, speaking lies and hypocrisies. Not just departing and then going somewhere else, but speaking lies about the faith you know creating stuff that's not uh real bringing up stuff that doesn't exist so i showed him in the bible where it said that jesus had brothers and sisters and it named them he said no they're asking the question i said no you're not asking the question brother they said is this not the carpenter right so i said what did he do you know so if that wasn't who he was Truthfully, then why would they state something that's truthfully if, they, if his brothers and sisters wasn't who they were, right? Why would they say, is he not is, is he not from Galilee? So why would they speak the first, why would they speak a truthful word, and then the rest they 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 they're making up? He had brothers and sisters. That's why the other parts of the Bible says that your brother, your mother, and your brothers and sisters are waiting for you. Are they here to speak? And he said, who my mother, who my brother? But those who were my father, right? So I showed him all this stuff, and even though he's seen it. He was like, I, I got to see it for myself. And so I reread it to him. And he was like, okay, I see it. But it's like, there's no faith. Like what they believe that faith is, is not faith at all. Because it's no faith. Because when you show a person what the words say, they automatically supposed to accept that and receive that. They didn't do that. You understand what I'm saying? They didn't do it. He didn't do it. He's like looking at it as what he believed and, and, and what he was taught and what he feels. Because he was saying that Mary didn't have any more children. I'm like, yes, she did. She's had multiple brothers and sisters. The Bible mentions that multiple times. You know? So he wants her to be this virgin who never had other children. That's why they call, I guess, the Virgin Mary. I'm like, she's not a, like, what? That, that happened with Jesus, but she had multiple more kids. The Bible even talks about how, you know, you know, he didn't know her yet. You know? So, but um, the point that I'm trying to make is that he was saying that being a Christian is a process. I'm like, where's the Bible say process? He was like, it's not in there. So I showed him where the Bible said, he's a new creature. I showed him what Jesus Christ said, you know, if you're lukewarm. You know, I'm like, wouldn't that all be a process? And then Paul said, if any man claims to be a brother, you know, doesn't does, does that. So what happens when they're in their process? They still go, they die and go to hell. Because Paul said, if anyone does things, they die and go to hell. And into everlasting life He was like yeah I said so you know sin is a choice That's what the Bible says Smith that he'll flee from you So it's like it's a choice You know So I mentioned that he brought the rapture up 
And I was like, okay, I said, so because like when I kept saying like the rapture's not in the Bible, they don't understand that because they're saying, well, Revelations is the rapture. Like that's how they see it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's so tricky. And like they're so blinded and so delusional because they see what the, the, the chain of events that happen in Revelations and they, you know, they're like, that's the rapture, but they don't understand. So I had to go deep. I'm going to show you what I did by the Holy Spirit. So I said, brother, if I was coming, I said, how does faith come? He said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I said, bingo. I said, so if I wanted my faith to, I said, we see the name Jesus in the Bible, right? I said, we see the name God in the Bible, right? We see the name Christian in the Bible, right? We see the name heaven in the Bible, right? So we can have faith in those. We can believe in those, right? He's like, yeah. I said, but the word rapture is not in there. So how can I have faith to believe in the rapture? How can I say, okay, show me the rapture. I said, if I was new coming to Christ and you're telling me about a rapture, okay? And I wanted to study because faith comes by what? Faith comes by hearing and hearing what? By the word of God. So that means I have to see these words, hear these words, okay? The Bible said that all scripture is the information of God. So you tell me about a rapture, I have to see it. How will my faith increase if I can't see the word rapture? I can't believe in what I can't see. I can't have faith in something that's, that doesn't exist, okay? We have faith in God because he exists. We have faith in Jesus Christ because it exists. It's written about him. It's told about them. So we don't just believe in something that, that's not written. That, we could just, that means we believe in anything. So I said, brother, if you could bring in anything, that means we don't have a true religion. That's why you have denominations and everything else. The same way the Pharisees and Sadducees were. So he was like, yeah, you're right. I said, think about it. If you can't show me the word rapture, how do I have faith in the rapture when I can't see it? Everything else you're supposed to have faith in, you're supposed to be able to see it in God's word. If not, you don't have faith in it. You only have faith in what the word of God say. Okay? So he was like, you're right. I said, Jesus Christ said it specifically. I said, it's not, it's not called a rapture, it's called the day of the Lord. I said, you know, someone made that up trying to say that it's supposed to be in relations, you know, to the, to the end times. I'm like, but that's not the case. Okay? It has to what I said in Jesus Christ said the Bible said specifically and I said in the last book of Revelations, the last chapter, what did John say? Don't add to the word, don't take out the word. So you're adding a rapture, trying to make it mean the rapture. That's not the word. It's not in there. So he was like, You're right. He understood what I was saying. So I broke it all down. My brother didn't want to talk anymore. He was like, he, he waved me up. He was like, okay. He's like, he didn't want to hear it. You could hear it, you could see it in his face. It was like it was like he was being tortured, you know, by the truth because he found so much pleasure. And his lies and his delusions. And when I brought the word, and he knew some Bible verses, though. That's the thing about it. They all know a little something here and there, but they're never well versed. Like what they believe in will bring contradictions if they try to start, you know, connecting the dots. What I believe in brings the truth, right? Because it buys on a contradiction. So he, he, he didn't want to talk anymore, you know? So that's the point I'm trying to make. So that's what I realized that they're not Christians. They don't believe in the Bible. They believe in an altered version of of the Bible. They don't believe in the Bible that, that if you go pick the King James Version up, they don't believe in everything that's on all those pages. They, you're going to find many things that they agree with and you're going to find many things they disagree with. I'm telling y'all, they're going to disagree with a lot of stuff. Women being preachers, they're going to disagree with tithes and offerings, they're going to disagree with a lot of stuff that's, not, that's, that's in the Bible. Because what they came to wasn't true Christianity. They came to a false Christianity. And when you show them the truth of God's word, they're going to be affected by it. Cause that's not what they signed up for. They signed up with a, a version that took some of God's scripture that they liked. Okay, that 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 they built their false religion off of. They don't want to hear all the stuff about you know being perfect and you know not sinning and you know and everything. You know they don't want to hear that because that goes against their their their, their delusion. Okay, so the false Christians are never going to embrace the word of God. They just be too shameful to be like, I don't really agree with that. I don't want to accept that because that's not what they've been taught. Think about it. Someone that believes the word of God, knows the word of God, you don't got to show them what the Bible say. Think about it. Brothers in the Bible never debated and argued over scripture. Okay? Whether Barnabas and Paul wanted to take Marcus and didn't want to take Mark, that's, that don't have nothing to do with scripture. Okay? That was their own preference. The Bible say, be wise servants of is dove. The Bible say most circles women as fools, but as wise. That was something that they had to deal with. They, nothing biblically was involved. They did. They, they didn't commit no sin. One decided to choose, take one. The other one decided I didn't want to take one. You know. So they 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 dealt with it in peace. They so they went separate ways. Okay. It was no hard feelings. Okay.
Paul felt what he felt. And that was uh, Barnabas' uh, relative. So that's how it went. So, but I noticed with the false Christians, they don't receive the Bible. They'll, they'll be like, we're, we're saying this, that we're not saying the same thing. Because they'll disagree. They think that they can, they think that they can, they can disagree with scripture and they can come up with what they want to come up with and believe what they want to believe. They don't understand that you're supposed to stand on what's written and what the Bible say. They think that like it's up for discussion. They can debate it and they can, you know, like try to figure out the, the, the true interpretation of scripture. But it's already interpreted. Like, it's like that's how they look at it. If they don't like it, they're going to uh, uh, find a way, you know, to rebuttal it. Okay. Second Corinthians says, we have in the same spirit of faith. According as is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. When did Christians start hosting funerals? Or when were priests ever instructed to officiate a marriage, etc.? You can't find it in scripture. So where do you see pastors in the Bible or Christians doing marriages? Okay, we know you're supposed to be married, but I'm saying, where did you see Christians doing it? And when did you see Christians, you know, hosting funerals? You'll see, you'll see unbelievers family members die and they'll go to a christian they'll go to a christian church to do a funeral where in the bible did you see that jesus never attended a funeral he said let the, he said, let the dead bury the dead so he didn't he didn't he told the man not even go to the funeral okay to let the, let the dead bury the dead and he wasn't there when lazarus died the bible say specifically stayed away right so you can see the glory of god so if it was tradition he would have been there Okay. If it was something that he wanted to be done, he would have been there. He didn't. You see? So we didn't we didn't host funerals. We didn't let unbelievers come to, you know, our, our gatherings and our place of worship to have their funeral. The Bible said we only look with unbelievers. They're not coming there to receive Jesus. They coming there to give comfort, believing through delusion that their that their loved one went to heaven and he did it. Most of the people that have funerals, a lot of them don't even be Christians. They be people that's in the world. They just go to a church, you know, because they have some type of connection through uh, delusion and superstition. And they want to believe that their loved one passed and went to a better place. Okay. We never did funerals. We never did weddings. Okay. Now, so that's not biblical. You can't be told anything about God, but you can be told everything that you don't know in the world. That's facts. Like whenever you tell people, whenever you try to tell people in the world or even people that claim to be Christians about God, they all act like they know it all. You can't tell them anything. They didn't. They didn't heard a few things their grandmother told them. They didn't. They didn't read a few things on the internet. I told the guy there on the internet. I told the guy. I said you can't trust the internet, brother. I said the internet is. I said. I said you can. You can type in chest pain right now. You are gonna see ten different things about your chest. Some gonna say it might be a heart attack. Some gonna say you might have pulled the muscle. Some might say it's trapped gas. You are gonna have different. You know. Uh, uh, views and beliefs because people, you know, have access to the internet. I said, but the Bible gonna say one thing. Only the internet gonna tell you multiple different things. The Bible gonna tell you exactly what that verse says, and it's that no interpretation is already interpreted, right? The Bible is the word of God. What He wants you to know is what He gave you, okay? But when you go on the internet, you type in one verse, you're gonna see 20 different interpretations. Which one do you choose? Would you spin the bottle and hope that in whatever uh, scripture, whatever interpretation it falls on, that's the one you go with? Come on, it don't go that way. Okay, you can't get to heaven like that. So you can't be told nothing about God, but you could be told everything about the world. You go to school, you learn, you know, you don't know how to change your oil. You know, you don't know how to drop no transmission, you no know, change your engine, nothing. And you let people tell you. Some of y'all don't know how to cook. Some of y'all don't even know when, when chicken is supposed to be done or when beef supposed to be done. Some of y'all don't know how to work an air fryer. So you go in there and you learn, educate yourself. From someone who is more skilled and more knowledgeable than you. You take from them, right? But when they come to God, because the word of God goes against people's lifestyle. Learning stuff from the internet about cooking or dyeing your hair or how much sugar should go in Kool-Aid. That don't that don't that don't affect your life. That don't destroy your delusion. That don't that don't cause you to have to see the reality. Okay? It it don't take away your pleasure. Of, of sin and making you see the reality that you're gonna die and go to hell okay many trust the mechanics knowledge without being educated on what the mechanic is speaking of that mechanic could tell you anything bring everything to you you don't sit there most people don't even know 
what the mechanics are saying. They don't even understand that mechanical talk. You trust a doctor, you trust your lawyer, you trust your accountant, you trust all these other people in the world. And you don't, because because they educate themselves, because they're knowledgeable, they went to school, right? And they learned things that you didn't learn. And they know what you don't know. So somebody comes that knows the word of God more than you, right? Has the spirit of God. So in scriptures, Bible chapter and verse, you don't receive it. Because it goes against your pleasures that you find in sin. That's the reality. Because the person who got the spirit is going to tell you exactly what that word says and give it to you truthfully. Okay? I can show you what the Bible says. You can read it, what it says, and still not believe. It affects the pleasure you find in sin. But I already spoke on that, though. Even thieves try to live as if they're not a thief. Who in the world truly confesses their evil and lets it be known? Not even robbers. Not even serial killers. They got to catch them. There's folks today that have done that have done crimes that still haven't been caught. And they haven't turned themselves in as well. Why? Because they know that it's wrong what they did. Okay? You got people that cheat on their, 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 their companions. And they live as if they're not doing those things. So they know how to make it look like what it's not. So all these false Christians that walk around, right? And they're trying to portray being what they're not. They're worldly. Because they know that the Bible says this and the Bible says that. And they're superstitious. They want to believe that good is going to happen. They want to believe they're going to go to heaven. They want to believe that they can live in sin, do what they want. So they're going to play that role. And they also know that the Bible um, is a book of righteousness. Instead of righteousness. And they want to be portrayed like that because they know that righteousness is accepted more than unrighteousness is accepted in the world. Right? So they portray themselves as being what they're not. Because they know that righteousness is accepted in the, in the eyes of the world. More than unrighteousness. Right? So... But they, they're, they're worldly. They just they just got the Bible and they know the basics of what the Bible say. So they build their character off of that, right? They might stop cursing. They might stop going to the club. But you, let me tell you something. There's so many ways that you can find pleasure in sin. More than just, you know, stopping the, 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 the normal things. Hey, Boo Boo. Hey, Boogie. Yeah. Hey, Buki. Y'all walking? Hey, Mimi. Hey, Buggy. Hi, Mama. Hey, Lady. Yeah, so it's more... Um, it's more sins that you can commit than stopping drinking and smoking and going to the club. People still lie. They still get angry. They be lustful, they be frustrated, they be angry, they be all type of stuff, you know? They But they'll stop the main things that they feel will, will make them look like a worldly person. See, they're not stopping what the Bible says. That's why they only stop what you can see on the outside or stop little things. But unbelievers stop that, though. But to live righteously, hi, Boo. Hey, Boogie, look, Boo. You say hi. Uh, hi. You say hi, everybody. Hi. Okay. Yep, so, you know, they stop the things that you can see on the outside or what they feel will make them look like a whore or look like a liar or look like, you know, someone that's sinful. So they stop those type of things, that, 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 but they don't stop. They still hold unforgiveness, rage, violence, you know, frustration, bitterness, un, uh, just name it, right? Because they don't truly have faith. Say hi, Buggy. Hi. Good job. So even thieves will act like they're not thieves. That's how people, that's how people, you know, steal. And that's how people, you know, take advantage of people and scam people. They don't come and say, hey, I'm a scam artist. So what I'm saying is these false Christians are still the same way the unbelievers are that's in the world. That know how to protect themselves from being spotted. Know how to protect themselves from being, you know, seen. The same way a thief will. So you got to think it's still the same mind. The only way you change is when you become born again and you live righteously, live holy, and live godly. Other than that... False Christians know how to portray themselves to be what they not. They know how to lie. They know how to look like what they want you to see. They know all that stuff. Okay? You can't have faith in what's not in the Bible. So if I never seen somebody pay tithes and offerings, come here, buggy. If I never seen the word rapture, if I never seen, you know, Paul tell me what sins he committed and what he was doing, or new level, new devil, or the, I can't believe in it. I can only believe in what the word of God say. Faith comes by hearing. And Paul said, you know, we have the same spirit of faith as it is written, I believe. You can't show me those things, so I can't believe it. I don't see Baptist, Methodist, Apostolic, 
I don't see denomination, non-denominational. I don't see none of minute having your own ministry, you know, women being preachers, you know, wearing suits and ties, going to church on Sunday, the Sabbath is this day. I don't see none of that stuff, so I don't believe in it. I only believe in what I see, okay? You can't have faith in what's not in the Bible. False Christians always saying about being miserable or being financially unstable. They never have any money or a decent job because they're trying to copy the Bible without the Holy Ghost power of God or being in the will of God. Unbelievers don't even complain and go through as much and don't go through as much as false Christians. You always see these Christians, these false Christians always making these songs about, you know, God, I, I ain't got no money because they're trying to mimic certain things in the Bible without, without being in God's will. Because God will provide, but God's not providing for them. So they're, they're, do, they're, they're crashing out. They're doing all this stuff. They're going overseas. They're doing all this stuff, and God is not helping them. He's not providing. He's not protecting them. So they find themselves jumping around, going from different stuff. You know, one day they, they, they got a, a homeless ministry. Next day they, they're doing an a orphanage. Next day God told them, like, they're, like false Christians are always unstable. Like, like you never seen believers in the Bible always just going from different things or changing different ministries or different callings or different anointings. Like that's only in false Christianity. You never, you always see false Christians always say, oh God, is, I'm, I'm prophetic. You know, Courtney said like 10 years ago when she, she was in the false Christianity, all her church members were claiming that they had all these husbands and wives. And none of them married to the same people that they were talking about that they was, they was married to, that, that God told them they was going to be married to prophetically. You see what I'm trying to say? So it, it switches. You go to Africa, you come back because what happens is the money start, the money stop coming in. You know, things start changing. Emotions get involved, darkness, feelings, and God's not involved. So you find them like doing all this stuff, and they don't got no defense. There's no power. There's no one there to help them. There's no one there to guide them. There's no one there to tell them truthfully what what the Word of God is saying. So they just whatever they they move about in anxiety, and they find themselves, they find themselves, you know, losing their money. Wasting their money, they'll, they'll probably sell their house, you know, and then they're, they're living on the street saying that God want them on the street. God don't want you to be homeless, you know. They'll do all this stuff, you know, believing that it's of God. But they, but then they'll find themselves, that's why they make them songs, because they're miserable. i never seen people so miserable as false Christians. I never did. they always singing about how I'm going through this, I'm going through that. Like, they so sad, they so miserable, they never got any money, they always losing their jobs, like, you know, because they become unstable. And the Bible said, a double mind man is unstable in all his ways. So they become unstable. They're doing all, like they, they're moving in, in, in insanity. They believe they got the Holy Ghost. They believe that they got the Spirit. They believe in that they're speaking in tongues. They believe in that God's revealing himself to them. They believe in all this stuff and it makes them go crazy. So they be like, hey, I'm going to leave my house and I'm going to Africa. They'll go out there and they're around false Christians. So false Christians take advantage of them. They'll treat them mean, you know, uh, you know, things will start happening, then they'll come on back to America. And they'll be okay, God is calling me to start my own church. So they'll be out trying to get loans, doing GoFundMes, you know, PayPal's. They'll be trying to uh, figure out how to get donations. They'll, they'll start trying to start a little business. So that, that won't follow through. Then they'll start trying to start a business, you know, where they're getting all this. Uh, they, they're like, like saying, oh, we're going we're gonna to do, uh, we're going to sell biblical clothes. You know, like it, it never becomes biblical. Daddy, daddy. Yes, baby. It, yeah, Mimi, come back. Tell Mimi, come back. You know, it never be biblical. So that's why you see all these songs. They always sing it. I like, God's going to help me. I was sick. I almost lost the faith. You know, I felt like throwing a towel. And I felt like giving up because God is not with them. You cannot live this life as a Christian without the spirit or being the will of God. Because it takes the power of God to guide you in this spiritual life. And without that, you're going to burn out. You're going to get angry. You're going to get offended. You're going to you're going to feel like you're going crazy. You know, it, just everything because you have to be spiritual. You have to have the Holy Ghost and you have to have the power of God. You can't fight these demons. You can't you can't understand. You're going to be opening yourself up, being friends with everybody. You're going to think everybody is a brother and sister in Christ. You're going to be giving. You're going to be doing all this stuff. You know, thinking that every you, you you don't you don't know you don't have a spirit of discernment from the spirits. You're not gonna know who's friend and who's foe. So you're gonna be giving yourself. You're gonna be giving yourself to everybody who's gonna be doing you wrong, take advantage of you, being mean to you. So it's gonna cause you to get discouraged. Some things gonna happen because you don't have the spirit of God. You don't have discernment, right? God is not with you. You're gonna be troubled. Love you all, God.